Okay, I uh, just want to remind all you beer lovers out there that it's not beer yet. Okay, we've had, we've had, Aaron go through and tell us the malting, how, how everything is malted, then how everything is mashed. He produces the nice sweet malt that we, that we like to ferment. And then Breck had just gone through and told us about the varieties of hops and what hops do. You know, hops add a, add a flavor profile, they add an aroma profile, they add a bitterness to counteract that malt that we like, and they also add a little bit of a preservative character. And, but it's not beer until yeast has had its way. <laughs> <laughs> and, and really, what does yeast do? In its, in its most basic form, yeast takes a sweet, sugary substance and turns it into an alcoholic one. Of course, there's a couple of pretty big, pretty big uh, characteristics of that. It produces not only alcohol, but a lot of carbon dioxide, and it also produces more than 500 flavor and aroma compounds. And not all of those are good flavors, so we'll talk about some of each of them a little bit. But for the brewer, for, for us drinking our beer here, if you got an amber beer or whatever, for a, a beer to produce the flavor profile that you expect, the aroma profile that you expect, and then of course the, the uh, sweetness that you expect or the bitterness that you expect, the brewer has to supply the right kinds of sugars. It's got to supply a healthy yeast and a healthy amount of yeast He's got to supply all the nutrients that are needed, including I have here oxygen in, in parentheses, and that's because the oxygen is totally boiled out of the, the brewing process. We boil it for an hour or 90 minutes, and that actually eliminates the oxygen, but it's something that's really needed in oxygen, especially during the, the uh, reproduction phase of fermentation. And so we have to add that back in once we cool the wort to a pitching temperature, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then we have to be able to control our fermentation temperature. And we have to have equipment to monitor the fermentation process so we know when it's done or if we need to do anything during the fermentation process. I'm really going to talk about two different kinds of yeasts. We're going to talk about ale yeast, which is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and lager yeast, which is Saccharomyces pastoranus. Of course, the lager yeast was named after Louis Pasteur, who, you got that right in the trivia question. He was the first uh, scientist to really determine that, that yeast was, in fact, a live, a live organism. And there are a few other types of things. Uh, Bretomyces is another yeast. If you guys are fans of the uh, Anchorage Brewing, they use Bretomyces a lot. There's also a lactobacillus that Will uses to ferment and produces a clean, sour kind of a flavor in beer. And then there's a wild open fermentation, and that is traditionally how uh, Lambics in uh, Belgian are brewed. They open the fermenters, let the local flora and fauna invade the wort that they're dealing with, and let uh, fermentation take place. Now, the one major difference, too, between lager yeast and ale yeast is lager yeast can digest or can convert uh, the sugar raffinose, where ale yeast cannot do that. You know, you really can compare the varieties of yeast to the varieties of man's best friend. You know, if you look at dogs, you know, we've got two pound chihuahuas to 200 pound St. Bernard's and everything in between. And the same can be said for yeast. You know, we have these yeasts, I, I, and I tried to do a count on yeast when I was home this morning, and, and you know, it's well over 100 varieties of yeast that we have available to us between lager yeast and ale yeasts. And, not only have these yeasts uh, evolved in a certain region of areas, but they actually evolved in, in specific, uh, specific breweries and areas. And all these yeasts are really available to us as home brewers. And I kind of like to talk to things on a home brewing scale, although I know, uh, you know the professional guys do it a little bit different. But just to give an idea, I've got two different fermenters up here right now, and this really demonstrates two different two different things between ale yeast and lager yeast. If I want to talk about the ale yeast first, ale yeasts want to ferment at a higher temperature. They're going to ferment between 60 and 75, although 75 is a little bit on the high range for, for most of the beers, unless you're the crazy uh, Belgians who might want to ferment even higher than that sometimes. And ale yeast will ferment at the top of the word, so it's what we call a top cropping 
a top cropping yeast, and it does all its magic at the top of the at the top of the wort. And that produces stuff like, you know, your ESBs, your IPAs, your Hefeweizens, your pale ales, all that kind of stuff. That's the kind of beer you're drinking when you're drinking a, an ale. It's, it's, it's with an ale yeast. And I like to always bring out kind of the exceptions in the case. And of course, in this time, the exception, I like to point out a Scotch ale yeast. Scotch ale yeast evolved in Scotland. It's cold in Scotland. So it will ferment down to 55 degrees pretty nicely and still, pro still produce a very nice beer. The other fermenter shows your lager yeast, and lager yeast ferment at a colder temperature. They ferment between 40 and 50 degrees. And they work their magic at the bottom of the fermentation tank instead of the top of the fermentation tank. And they produce your lagers, your pilsners. They have a real clean flavor profile. They don't produce uh, as many of the esters as you get, as many of the fruity esters, I should say, that you get in the, uh, in the warm fermentations of the uh, the ale yeast. And the one thing I want to point out too is there was no right question to one of those answers today when they talked about the uh, esters in the German ale yeast because esters is one thing produces bananas and there's the clove phenols. The clove flavors are actually produced by phenols. Uh, but the, the exception I like to show here is the California lager yeast. California lager yeast is uh, the beer that produces uh, Anchorage Steam Beer, California Common Beer, and that is a lager yeast that actually ferments at 60 degrees and still produces a nice clean lager flavor. We have to remember that fermentation is a biological process, so temperature control is very, very important, especially when you look at the difference between ales and lagers. Uh, and you have to be able to monitor that temperature. If we take lager as an example. Lager likes to ferment at a colder temperature. Biological processes don't work as well at the colder temperatures. So you monitor your fermentation process. You take your original gravity of your work when you pitch your yeast. That's the first time you put your yeast in. And let's say you have a fermentation, a, a, an original gravity that's 1.055, and that's going to ferment down to something that's going to produce a beer of about 5.5% alcohol. So you measure your original gravity, make sure your fermentation is, is pr progressing nicely. But one of the things you got to do is you got to taste your beer. And lager, because it's colder, has a difficult time digesting or, or cleaning up its mess, so to speak. And so we help it along, and once it's done fermenting, we will warm it up from, let's say, 45 degrees to 60 or 65 degrees for a few days. And that helps get rid of off flavors like diacetyl and things like that, which diacetyl is a really common thing for my lager yeast, which is a butter or a butterscotch flavor, which in some beers works really well, but in, in, in it's allowed in, in low amounts, but in other beers is really an off flavor. The other thing that's really important is pitching rates. And there's several things that really affect your pitching rate. So pitching rate is how much yeast you have to put into a, a sugary wort to allow it to ferment and to ferment, uh, produce a healthy fermentation. And that's going to be the temperature you have, which lager versus ale. And then it's also going to be the original gravity. How much sugar you have in that wort. If you have a really, really big beer that's going to produce a 10% alcohol beer, you gotta predict, you've got to pitch a lot more yeast. So if I take, for instance, if I take, uh, let's take an ale that is a 1055 beer, and I pitch, I have to pitch six million good yeast cells per milliliter of beer. Well, there's 19,000 milliliters of beer in a five gallon batch of beer. So that means I have to pitch about 114 billion cells of good yeast in that ale to have a good clean fermentation. On the other side, if I take that same beer at an original gravity of 1055 and it's a lager fermentation, I've got to pitch at least twice as much. So I've got to pitch at least over, well over 200 million cell, live cells. And we do that by making a, a ferment, uh, by making a starter, by making a small beer before we start our, our whole brewing process. And, and if you guys come over and look at the malt, We've got a stir plate over here and a uh, Laurel Meyer flask that we use to make a small beer with. But all that's really important. And, and, and if you have a big beer, you have to make sure not only that you have enough yeast, that you have enough oxygen too, to allow that yeast reproduction to take place. There's also some undesirable stuff that can take place during fermentation. And that could be, for instance, a stuck 
fermentation. And a stuck fermentation is typically the result of temperature control, or it may be the result of a real high alcohol type beer. And, and that's where you monitor your temperatures if you see in your fermentation process. And if you see you have a stuck fermentation, uh, many of the times you just have to warm it up, bring it to a warmer part of the house if you're a home brewer, so to speak. Um, it could be the fact that you have a really, really high alcohol content beer. Now, the yeast is in there fermenting along, and not only is it converting that sugar into alcohol, but it's creating a toxic environment for itself. So it starts to kill itself off. And so you have to make sure you pick the proper yeast that's going to have a high alcohol tolerance too if you're making a, a real high gravity beer. You can also have stripped flavors, and that's a result of over pitching. It's far, far less common for you to over pitch than it is to under pitch, at, at, at the home scale anyways. But if you pitch too much yeast, it takes off all those flavors and you're left with a really, really bland kind of beer. And then there's really, really bad off flavors that you don't want and, and you can get things that are kind of like metallic or almost like a blood flavor. Uh, you get this corn flavor, which is uh, another off product. You can get stuff to taste medicine-y, grassy, cardboardy, uh, astringent, cheesy. There's a lot of different flavors, um, but not all of them are, are a product of fermentation. Sometimes it's a product of poor hopping by Breck, or poor mashing by Aaron over here. <laughs> but, but when everything works right and Aaron's got this beautiful work that's going right and, and Breck's got this hopping schedule that's just fantastic, beautiful flavor profile, beautiful aromas and everything. And we really got to remember good old Benjamin Franklin. You know, beer is proof that God loves us. So 